would turn as I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. You might think you'll see this at the end, but I am. Um, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. I'm in the shop today, and I'm making a ring. See this ring? I'm going to hit the zip thing. thing. You see this ring? That is a ring out of epoxy with a stainless steel interior band. And it's sized, I think it's 8 millimeter wide or 10 millimeters wide. Uh, size 13 width. Um, and it is made for decoration. This one's not going to decorate me very long because it's the wrong size. It won't even fit on the other meat hook. But I'm going to show you how to do that today. It's, it's a fun project, but now that I'm done with it, I'm telling you straight up, this little project kicked my little dago ass. It's been a while since I did some serious turning in the shop and stayed focused on it. It's also been a while since I found all the tools I needed and used them the way I want to. And this is kind of churning, but not knowing what to do. So. I'm getting back guys, I really am. And if I got to do these little simple projects to get it all back, I'll do them. If you got to do these little simple projects to make bon points at home, make them. But first, you know what you got to do, it's in the rules, it's there, black and white. You got to watch. Now that we have the opening out the way, <clears throat> I hope it was done right because I didn't do the opening before I turned the rings because I need to turn the rings first. All right, what are we doing? We're turning some rings or using some parts and pieces I get from craft supplies. They're stainless steel rings. Give you a close up on this. Stainless steel rings. Got it's nicely machined. It's done nice. It's right size. I'll be doggone. Mine's almost the wrong size. But they hey they changed since I bought mine. And they've added some real man sizes to this, like 14, 14 and a half. Now, how do you know what size to get? Well, let's go to that right now. This is a ring size gizmo. Gizmo, that's a technical term. This has got them all the way up to 13. Right here. And you slip it on and you say, well, that'll be me. Except, except this is a little narrow band it's going to feel different than that wider one I, I'm doing a wide one so I may want to go to a 14 when I do this um, and I'm going to order some parts and pieces I'll probably do that this little gizmo this little treasure trove all the ring sizes 27 sizes on here and it's on a clip that's not supposed to come apart and all that oh it doesn't either uh, does it oh it will uh, okay but it's all on this one thing and it's made for you, the craftsman, to find out what size ring people wear. Uh, so if they want to order one, and you have to clear, clarify, I want to base the order with you got size give me. Um, but this is only like five bucks on Amazon.com. Five bucks, come on. Um, there's other ones, there's plastic ones, there's Monel steel ones, there are, hey, you don't need anything that fancy. Five bucks. That's all you need. So I size mine because it only went to 13, and that's the only size the craft supplies went to at the time. I got my 13 millimeter by 8 millimeter band. Big one. Big as I had. Then I went and got me some core, some acrylic. This came from also from craft supplies. Now this acrylic comes in square pieces. Ta da! It's a little square, alright? I don't like spinning squares. So I took it to the bandsaw and I knocked the corners off. Get it eight sided. Why? Because it's going to doom, 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 and that's the sound effect. Doom, 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 doom. It could come off. I don't want it to come off. Why? The one that. It's over here somewhere. The one that came off a couple of years ago. I saw it the other day. <clears throat> it, it, it wasn't cool and it went that way, not this way. Normally, when Murphy's driving a bus, it'll hit you right in the face. So, I eight sided it. Then what do I do? Then I put it on a glue block and I use Sure Tape. S H U R T A P E. 
Stronghold Sure Tape. I got a 1 800 number on it if you want it. 1 800 321 0253. And this is a Hold Strong Tape. And I really thought that in all my being out of shop and all that amount, I'd lost all this stuff. Found out I got three or four rolls of them brand new on the shelf. And it still works fine. When we talk about how to put it on with the shirt bond tape, with the shirt tape, and then another way to put it on, because there's changes and everything. Now, sometimes the smallest things get you lit up and, and going, you think things went really great. To me, pushing this rain go button and seeing that lathe come on and then going over to the rheostat and changing the speed and it moves real smooth and that's what I'm looking for. That's heaven. We just changed that rheostat real, real nice. I have a wooden face block on here and I'm going to turn it up. All I'm doing is putting a flat face on it. To mount this, I'm going to do it with double stick tape. This is a sure tape I was talking about. And it it's like double stick duct tape. But don't go ask for double stick duct tape because they locked me up for that one time. Um, this is, they said it was an unnatural thing. But um, it feels like duct tape, looks like duct tape, smells like duct tape. And it holds like you won't believe. Really. So, I've been using it for years and years. And I found it at Lowe's. Um, where they had tape. The last time I went to Lowe's and I couldn't find it. And it was only 10 days ago. Um, I went and looked in the carpet section. And the lady said they happened to be out. Um, <clears throat> credibility of people at Lowe's is, to me, very light. Um, if they don't know what it is, or don't can't put their hands on it, or it's not in their section, uh, we're temporarily out of that. So I normally do a little shopping around. I found it in a in a um, carpet supply company for putting down treads and 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 steps. Funny place to find it, huh? Well. But I gave you the name and I gave you the number, and that's where you need to look at it. Now, I got it on double stick tape. I located my center. See the center? That's it. We'll blend the center. All right. I want to put it on this block. This is not that difficult, and it's something that almost any wood turner can get into. But in a moment, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. All right. Have that done. I have my ring here. I'm going to bring up my tailstock and put some pressure on this piece. Now, see, I can adjust a little bitty bit. And then I want to leave the pressure on it. For a period of time that's very much like now. Just let it get a good set. Now what I did, I get the nicest calls. This is like a family you want to hang out with. Uh, I got a call the other day, uh, one of our regulars, Ron, um, tells me that Dave at D-Way Tools is going to retire at the end of the year. But he's already got a guy filling in for him that's going to take over his business and run it just the way Dave does, which is a family business, which means the tools will all be inspected by the same guy, looked at, and it'll be high quality. That's amazing. And then, today, I get a note that Levi Woodard got married. How did that happen? Where was I at? I mean, Le Levi was... They hadn't given a period yet when we first met Levi. And now he's got a wife. God, he's either lucky or I'm very old. And SWAT is coming up August 24, 25, and 26. If you need information, you got to go to SWATTurners.org. I keep saying dot .com and it's wrong. Dot or SWAT. Look, see it? That's where you get all the information for the world's finest wood turning 
Symposium. My opinion. We have it between centers. Follow me on this. This is a center, this is a center, and this is being pushed between the centers. It means I'm stabilizing the piece as close to center as I can. That's what you want, okay? Center to center. I'm going to crank it back up. I'm running at about a thousand RPMs or so. And I am wearing my shield. My responsibility to you is to show you how to do it properly and how to do it safely. If you choose not to, that's your choice. My choice is I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So to, sometimes the sound might be a little muffled. Stick with me. Knock the corners off. Okay, I've knocked the corners off, and I have it a little bit closer to doing round. The reason I eight-sided was to eliminate that vibration I was getting. And in a little bit, I got to resharpen that, that skew, that gouge. It just isn't getting where I wanted to be, and I shouldn't force it. Now, the next step is to size the ring. I know you bought a size, but this is how you got, you have to size this. Now, I'm using epoxy because my dear wife saw this plastic and said, I got to have a blue one. And you're going to hear that from people. Do you have any orange with the bleed? You know, and, all right. You can use any wood you want. The wood selection is extremely critical because when you get done, it's just a little band of wood. You'll see it when there's just a little band of the epoxy left. There's just a little band of wood. It needs to be stabilized or steady wood. You can't go cut an apple tree down and turn the ring out of it. It's not going to be stabilized and it's not going to be steady. So stabilize your wood. Now. We have this down to what this is. There's a couple of ways to do this. Some videos say you drill a hole here. I'm not real keen on drilling a hole. Then you have to buy a, a, a chuck that fits in your tailstock and all that stuff. So I'm real keen on let's make it work with the minimum we can because you're just getting into this and I'm not really out to get you to spend a ton of money. So if you can get into turning these rings relatively inexpensive, you'll do it. Hopefully, I'm trying to see out the corners. You can see what I'm doing. Just got to put a, a, a penetration in here. Got to emphasize, very light cuts on this. I've checked this about four or five times. You're probably going to say, when are you going to quit? When I'm a little bitty bit larger. I don't want to be too big. Oh, wait, it's here. I spun it off. I put too much pressure on it pulling one way, and, and it's not the right size for the ring yet. It's close. Boy, is it close. But it's not there yet. So i got to be, I got to be better than close. i got to be on the money. So I can either drop down the size on this and put a, a 12 in it or whatever, or I can re-glue. To do this, I refaced this. And honestly, if I had brought out the glue and put the super glue in here, it may have stuck better because um, it's an old piece of wood. But I'm going to reface it. I'm going to go back with the double stick tape again, and I'll put it back on this piece. As much as I bragged about it, then I had to give up on the first one I did. But that was me. I took a shortcut and it bit me. All right, I turn around and that is spinning on uh, on part of my tailstock. I call a soft touch, and it's just an adapter that's screwed onto the end of my tailstock and allows me to push up against something. And I want this to be 
smooth and flat, no wrinkles behind it. All right, now that would be good and smooth and flat, and it's going to run very true. Now, should set up for a minute or two. If I'd done that thing with the super glue, I wouldn't have had this problem, and I don't have anybody in management in a, around the place to get me the other glue. So we're going to work through it. Put it back on. Let us stay a few minutes. Now look, it's running fairly true. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's a way to reach through a piece. And a soft touch, I have revolving center, and I drilled and tapped this to a three-quarter ten tap. See it? And then this screws onto my tailstock. That's, where is it at? Right there. Screws onto my tailstock. And I can push against something without the without the bumper, without the, the hole, or I can use it to center up something. And they're very easy to make. I call them the soft touch. And folks say, I looked in the catalogs, I can't find it. I don't have it in a catalog. Go back to putting the tools on. Shield up. Now I have what my dad say fiddle farted around with this thing long enough to where it fits in there really nice. Goes in and I can slide it all the way up. And that's where I want it to be. I want it to fit in there very nicely, tightly. Tightly, that's the term. Very nicely, and that's gonna give me what I want from a bearing. And it has to be able to go all the way in. Now, we can glue this in right now and then face off this ring. Or you can just face off the ring. I prefer to just face it off. Shields up. I don't know if you heard that just now. Uh, something happened, and I'm not certain what it was. Um, but uh, what ends up being is I overheated that edge with the wrong tool because I should have used a scraper, but I was using a bead ant like a scraper, and I got a hot spot, and it caused a chip, and it blew it out. And um, I think the technical term for this is crap. So I'm going to glue up another one and go back to it again. Huh. Where'd the ring go? We're ready to glue the ring in. I'm going to glue it in right now. It'll help steady this piece. And the, before I do it, I'm going to brush off the stainless steel surface with a little, what I got on there, 320 grit paper, just to put a little bit of scratch on a surface. You don't need a lot. You don't need to chuck it and all that other stuff. All you want to do is make sure that that glue bonds to it. And there's some oils and stuff that'll be resilient or re left on them. So I'm going to use medium star bond. I just want to put a little bead in here. And then immediately put the ring in. See, it went for a good tight fit quickly. That's what you're looking to get. Now we've turned it, I inserted the ring, I glued it in using medium thick super glue, and I'm take, I took it off the face plate, and now I'm going to remove the tape. And a smart guy would take it over to the bandsaw and knock those corners off because I don't want those sharp corners spinning at me. But then today hasn't been one of those smart days. But I'm really thick. Look how wide that is. That's all got to come down. Needs a wriggle a bit. This is a standard ink pen mandrel. Seven millimeter. 
I got a couple of spaces on here. Then I have these rings, dental eye rings that are, they don't stick to super glue or anything. And they're spacers, they'll hold this off. And that's going to help me stabilize this when I turn off this outside. Why? Because I want to be between centers again. So I can bring my tail stock up, head stocks up, lock bars in, everything's set. When I spin this, it's been nice and true. And that's where I want to be. Because I'm running between centers, got the shield down. And this is a, 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 an epoxy product. Um, I'm doing taking some light cuts to take it off. Remember, I generate a fair bit of heat when I'm scraping like that. A, a good reverse negative rake scraper would be really great for this. But I like using my 3 8 inch gouge. Shield up. What I want to do right now is take a look at how the piece is shaping up. So I took my dough ring off and I am down to where that's thin folks. That's really thin. And that might be where I want it to be. I can see the aluminum the, the stainless through it. So I'm going to true up the two edges and then put it in and polish it out. Oop, here it is. Put it in and polish it out. Now I've dressed it off. I'm going to bring the speed way down. It's a beauty of having a reset that works right. And not that down. Come on. Bring it up a little bit. Then I can go in with my pads and start sanding it. I'm going to start with 180 just to get any fuzz off. Don't want to go too hard, too fast. I'll tell you what my enemy is going to be here. The enemy of this plastic is going to be heat. Because so I'll heat it up, it's just going to go to a million places. We'll talk more about that one day, but it'll just go a million places. Sanding these out. And this is 600 grit. Water helps a lot. The way to get water, God gave it to us. Put it right on the tip of our tongue. Don't load the disc down. See, if you can rub it off, you're not loading the disc down. That's an important part of this. Do not load the disc. Otherwise, you're just buffing. You're not sanding. So I'm going to keep going through the grits. You got me at the very end here. What I've done is I sand it up to, oh my God, 1,200, no, 1,500 really, because um, Vince takes care of me, gets me what I need. And remember, don't skip a stage in your buffing, in your sanding. It's 400 plus one half, which is 600, which is plus one half. It gets me to 800 plus one half, gets me to 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, whatever. All right? I don't want to skip a grit because that's going to leave the marks. And as much as I think I'm not going to see the marks, I'm going to see them. And so are you. All right, already. We got it done. I had to go clean my hands up, put my regular glasses on. Um, management came in earlier and she found out I was bleeding on company time. I pinched myself. But I take cumin in my blood and, hey, when you bleed, you bleed. Um, this is the final product. Look at that. Can we do this a little bit differently? Yes, we can. We can do it like this. And that is a epoxy piece. It's got a lot of glare, got a lot of shine to it. Now, let me explain. I don't wear rings and watches. I just don't. I've been working with my hands for 60 plus years, and I haven't had any severe accidents because I don't wear rings and watches. All right. You're going to keep it on if you got to. Um, but, and then some guys say, I can't get them off. Get them cut off and resized. But this is a doodad, a de decoration. It's also a hazard. So if you make them, be careful. I didn't have my polish. I probably gave it away. Yeah, yeah we won't go into all that. But this doesn't have polish on it yet. It's really nice. I really like it. I buffed it on my beel a little bit and took all the 
the, the glue and all off. I think this is really going to be nice. I've got one more blank this color and somewhere around here on a concrete floor is the other ring because I had two rings and you heard the first one leave. Well, it, it's still in here. And now I've got some size for my wife because I want to make a set for her. And then I want to look and see what other exotic woods I have that have been sitting up here. You know, I've been sitting around for about five years. Well, four years exactly. And uh, it, uh, I've got this wood. It's all seasoned. I'm going to use it. Get into it. But I always make a deal with you. I don't live up on my deals. I'll talk more in a minute. But first, right now, got some photos to show you. We're going to get into the gallery with a couple of pens from Warren. Uh, I told you about Emily. He loves to turn. Here's a blank that he turned him. I mean, he created himself. I really need to get into this. Andre did this piece. Beautiful segment of piece. I can't pronounce your last name, Andre. I apologize for that. Now, this came from Terry Creeling. And it looks like just some pieces and parts and laying on a table. And then he put them on a lathe and glued them all up into a big, um, sort of like a rough end of a bowl, and then they spun it out, and that's what it looks like when it's spun out, and that is some nice featured work, but when the real comes to it, here it is, with a great sealer and a great finish. Back with the photos. That is work done by turners like you, that watch this channel and I ask them and I ask you if you've got photographs of your work send them to me I will include them in one of my YouTubes just like I did now the name that the address you saw at captainetty at gmail.com is me and that's where you have to send it if you like me to use it so we did the ring the supplies came from craft supplies they have a lot of sizes the sizing indicator came from Amazon ring size indicator all right um the epoxy was from craft supplies but you can use wood just you can't it has to be seasoned or conditioned or stabilized because i mean what do you i got film on there i mean really it's down to film it's that thin this is for me wearable but it's only a 13 and i really need a 14. So go in tonight and order me the, the right size. Um, but you can make these. You can enjoy them and give them to your friends. Resize them first. Don't, don't guess at their size. You have no idea how mad your wife would be when you make it too small. What girl are you talking to? All right. So you don't have to explain that too much. But that's all it took. I'm going to polish this up a little bit. If I can't find my polish, I'm going to go to the auto parts store tomorrow and look for some. The auto parts store, I look for the polish that you put on uh, lex, pl pl plexiglass to polish out stuff. That works great for this kind of stuff. Great. And you can put a little bit of heat on it, too. All right. That looks like it wraps up our day. I think I covered everything we went through. Hope we didn't run long. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope we did right. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Oh, and I'm with Big Eye Productions. We are the cheapest on the carbide cutters and other stuff. Check our website, www.eddiecastellan.com. And if I can help you, give me a call. If you want to chat, give me a call. Guy called today about finishes. You guys all got good questions, and sometimes I can help you. Just give me a call. You take care. Be good. I'm out outside making shavings. <laughs>